aviation footprint itself is uh, much less of Indian aviation footprint is much less in terms of carbon dioxide equivalent. India is having the potential of emerging as a global exporting hub of SAF. So we have great competitive edge once we set up this. So currently we are joined by Dr. SSV Ramakumar, who is the Director R&D of IOCL. Uh, sir, um, we saw the presentation and uh, we uh, got to know a lot of insights on the current event that is going on, that is sustainable um, uh, fuel, that is uh, SAF. And um, I, I just uh, wanted to ask the sustainable point of that sustainability. I know it's a very very layman question to ask, but the audience would want to know that when we are talking about the sustainable um, aviation fuel, so the blending point, how will that be actually sustainable to create an ecosystem and what are the logistics that we are actually talking about here? See, uh, it's, a, it's a good question in fact. Uh, what I wanted to say is any mineral based uh, aviation turbine fluid, the current fluid on which all the flights will uh, fly, whether it is defense or civil aviation. One liter of uh, mineral based uh, aviation turbine fluid, it, it gives you 3.16 uh, 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 grams of uh, carbon dioxide uh, equivalent. But uh, any any just uh, take the sustainable any sustainable aviation fluid on its own it will offer only 20% of that that emission so you bring you blend 5% or 10% or 2% uh, of this sustainable aviation fluid overall aviation footprint itself is uh, much less of indian aviation footprint is much less in terms of carbon dioxide equivalent so 10% of uh, uh, going forward by 2030 if we if we know the projections of our final footprint aviation footprint emission footprint at that point of time i think 10 percent would uh, give a break even uh, break even uh, reduction in emission footprint because of clean burning uh, fuels that we are going to add if not 100 percent just 10 percent itself will do that because the only 20 percent compared to 100 percent carbon dioxide mm -hmm. take 100 versus 20 that that difference is going to give you and how long it will be because uh, it's a blended fuel as long as the f a flight is flying it will it will sustain uh, sir uh, you also mentioned in your presentation the initiatives that are taken by the indian oil corporation and uh, uh, the kind of roadmap that has been created to provide the facilities to further this initiative can you just um, uh, talk us about that and uh, highlight those points so, uh, talking about Indian oil uh, initiatives, uh, we are working exclusively on uh, the pathway uh, alcohol to jet from uh, for producing these synthetic aviation fluids. Uh, I call it as synthetic aviation fluids, but they are sustainable aviation fluids. So, uh, our main uh, uh, focus is on utilizing the uh, possibly surplus ethanol that is going to be available in the year 2025 and convert that ethanol into sustainable aviation fluids. Like there are many pathways which are being talked in this session. For example, uh, used cooking oil uh, to biodiesel, uh, though as a, as a scheme it is available from Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas, somehow that is not able to uh, take off and uh, collection of used cooking oil is, is, a, is a challenge. So, what we feel is that even this used cooking oil or this ethanol uh, will be diverted into synthetic aviation fluid. So, we are uh, going to set up two plants. One is a commercial scale plant in Panipat using third generation ethanol. When we say third generation ethanol, our ethanol is not based on uh, either agricultural residue or sugarcane molasses. We are going to convert refinery of gases into ethanol. And so we are converting already a, a, a carbon dioxide emission into ethanol and this ethanol is further uh, uh, converted into synthetic aviation fluids. So when anybody uses our SAF, it's a double recycled, double carbon recycled uh, SAF and which is having a, a life cycle emission reduction of 82 percent as, as per our estimate. So this is going to be one of the best uh, and we are not 
डिपेंडेंट ऑन दी एग्रीकल्चर रेसिड्यू आर सब there is a lot of discussion on the agricultural uh, residues the molasses no, but, that but, we have uh, any alcohol to jet pathway mm-hmm. doesn't distinguish between uh, uh, 1g ethanol 2g ethanol or any ethanol can be converted into sf so even sugarcane molasses based ethanol or higher alcohols can be converted into uh, sustainable aviation fluid second generation uh, ethanol also can be converted we are going for third generation mm-hmm. ethanol sir also one thing that i uh, noticed in the uh, slide was that electrification if the furthering of electrification would happen that part of ethanol would also be directed towards aviation yeah. so uh, so can you just uh, highlight uh, your point of view on this uh, particular because again there's a lot of talk on the evs that are coming now and the electrification and the uh, process that is uh, happening now so how would actually that be uh, directed towards aviation see that's the reason why as uh, the ministry uh, joint secretary from ministry of petroleum and natural gas also mentioned by 2025 uh there is a mandate that we have to blend 20% of ethanol in gasoline for terrestrial transport for land based transport but as you rightly said for that you require 1000 crore liters of ethanol but if suppose some percentage of this gasoline is uh, getting freed off because of electrification there is a there is a projection that uh, the first automobile segment on ground that is going to be converted into e mobility paradigm is the two wheeler segment and two wheeler today uh, consumes uh, 60% of our gasoline so if that all that gasoline is freed then all that ethanol is also going to be freed so this can be even otherwise also even if it is nothing is freed out what i mentioned in my presentation is that the projections uh, of ethanol availability by 2025 are 1700 crore liters whereas what we require for gasoline blending is only 1000 uh, crore liters so 700 crore liters of ethanol is anyway surplus and uh, e mobility may add up those figures so there is enough uh, feed stock to produce uh, sustainable aviation fuels that's the reason why i told that uh, india is having the potential of emerging as a global exporting hub of sf our production cost generally compared to any other geography would be anyway less so we have great competitive edge once we set up this so uh, once once the mandate from the ministries come legislative uh, legislative bodies come probably many more private entrepreneurs also will be enthused to set up these uh, plants there will be a, mm. a public pa- public and private partnership, partnership. that will be